So this may seem weird to you, but this place is pretty special to me. It's kind of a holy ground, and it's just a loading dock, but in the book I tell the story about how our church wanted to acquire a facility. It's a 42,000 square foot warehouse. And we were gonna sign the contract and build a campus here and put our offices here. It would be our first permanent building. And the ownership group essentially came back to us and said, we don't want a church in our shopping center. And uh, all the doors started to slam shut. One night we brought out over 100 volunteers out here to this loading dock. We drove over in Greyhound buses and we got down on our knees on this loading dock, right there in the oil-stained concrete with people in pleated khakis just coming off work, and we prayed this sun stand still prayer that somehow God would make a way for us to, to get in this facility. And we prayed like that for month after month after month. In fact, I drove by this warehouse every day almost, and I would stretch my hand toward the building and I would pray, God, I thank you that we will have worship experiences in this warehouse. We will see thousands of people come to Christ in this warehouse. And I got a text early one morning from our executive pastor saying that the company that didn't want to let us rent this space and come in here and, and renovate this warehouse and have church here went out of business over 70 stores nationwide. And uh, Long story short, we ended up signing the contract and, and uh, having church here. In fact, just a few months after we opened this campus, we baptized hundreds of people on these loading docks. So every time I come here, I'm reminded that when you pray like a juggernaut and you ask God to do the impossible, there's no mountain that He can't move. So the thing is, and I talk about this a lot in the book, most of us don't pray like juggernauts. We don't pray audaciously, we pray pitiful prayers. And I wanna help you change that. Cause I know that chances are your prayer life is boring. I don't mean that as an insult, it's just a reality. I came to realize a few years ago, my prayer life was very stale and stagnant. And at times, I'm gonna be honest with you, even as a pastor, non-existent. Because the way that I was praying wasn't producing any kind of faith building results. And I don't know that I even believed when I prayed that anything was gonna happen as a result of my prayers. And if you don't believe anything's gonna happen when you pray, soon you give up and you find something better to do. That's why I try to teach the concept of building your case before God in prayer. Like finding a new way to pray. Because let's be honest, you're only really going to pray about a few things in your life. Like there, there are a few areas that are, that are near and dear enough to your heart to pray about. Um, so every time you go to pray, you're either going to be praising God for His goodness or praying for your family and friends that God would bless them or praying for somebody who doesn't know Christ or praying for provision or healing. But inside of those different categories, there are really only so many things that you're ever going to pray about. And when we come before God, uh, there, there's got to be a variety not in what we pray about, but in the way we pray about what we're praying about. So we learn how to bring these things that matter to us to God because they matter to Him to size up the impossible situations and then pray about them in, in a way that is bold, faith-inspiring, and, and earth-shaking. So I think a good place to start is by evaluating what your prayer life is like right now. What kind of prayers are you praying right now? And I'm gonna guess that you're praying some pretty boring prayers right now. Don't be insulted when I say that. Uh, the only reason I say that is because I've been right there. I realized a few years ago that I am lobbing language into the atmosphere and calling it prayer. And I'm not even really thinking through a lot of the things I'm praying. Like I wake up in the morning and I pray, God be with me today. Well, what kind of prayer is that? God sits on a throne in heaven and he encompasses the circumference of the earth. He fills all space and time and all the galaxies. We're the guests on his planet and we're asking him to be with us. I mean, that sounds nice, but it really doesn't get you anywhere. We'll tack opt out clauses at the ends of our prayers. We'll say, God, uh, if it be thy will. And, and the thing is, God has given us the scriptures so that we can know his will. And if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us and we can have confidence that he'll do it. So I'm not trying to change what you pray about. I want you to pray for your family. I want you to pray for God to bless you and give you success and to help you to share the gospel for his glory. I want to change how you pray about those things. I want you to start 
start praying like a juggernaut, overpowering and overcoming all the obstacles in your way. Let me walk you through this really practically because I don't want you to be discouraged hearing me say, the way you pray is dumb, you need to pray better, you need to pray bigger, but not know how. Let's take an example. If you have someone in your life who is far from God, and it may be your husband, it may be your child, it, it may be a friend you haven't seen in years, and you wanna pray a sun stand still prayer that God would save that person, well, go to the Word of God and find examples of times when, when God rescued people from sin, like when He called Zacchaeus out of the tree. And, and when you pray, don't just get into pretty please mode with God. God, would you save my friend? Pretty please, pretty, pretty, pretty please with a cherry on top. God, I'll spin around, I'll do a dance, I'll give more money. No, 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 no. Base your case in the Word of God and say, Lord, like you called Zacchaeus out of that tree and, and made him a follower of Christ. I'm praying that you would call my friend, my uncle, my mom, my dad out of their sin. Just like God saved my dad and I've seen God do this thousands of times in our church, he'll, he'll respond to that prayer in faith. Now he's going to give you a corresponding action. That's what we mean when we say you must push while you pray. He's going to call you to minister to that person and to share the word with that person. But it all starts with that bold prayer. Size up the situation, specifically engage God, engage with the scriptures. Pray God's will by praying God's word. Let's take another example. Um, let's say you have an addiction or a stronghold or even just an obsession or a habit pattern in your life and you need God to break it. And go to the Word of God and find the examples where Jesus set captive people free and where God caused chains to fall off. And when you start praying and taking corresponding action so the sun can stand still and your addiction can break, infuse your prayer with some attitude. Come before God and say, Lord, I know that you don't want me to be addicted. You don't want me to be controlled by anything other than you. So God, I'm asking you to make the sun stand still and stretch your faith and, 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 and stretch your, the, the, the bounds of your heart and, and, and really believe that God is who he says he is and he can do what he says he can do. Pray like a juggernaut. Pray big for God's glory. Pray specifically. Pray practically. Pray with confidence. Pray with hope. Pray, pray with big aspirations. We serve a big God and he's worthy of sun stand still prayers. What are you gonna pray about this week? What promised land is God calling you to inherit? What loading dock are you gonna kneel down on and say, God, even if I have to wait, even if I have to uh, stand in, in patience and stand in faith for months or even years, I'm not letting go until you do this for me. And according to your word, may it be done to me. I want you to identify that land and then begin to build that case before God and your prayer life is going to start to resemble Elijah who was a man just like us but he prayed that it wouldn't rain and it didn't rain for three years. Your prayer life is going to start to look like Joshua who prayed for the sun to stand still and the sun stopped in its tracks. You're going to inherit the land that God has promised to you.